Now, the Aventon Andreas is Aventon's first steel fixed gear and is priced and specced very similarly to the Kilo TT Pro, the uncontested best value steel fixed gear. After riding the Andreas under real world conditions, let's take a closer look at it to see if it's worth your hard earned money. For a light and lively ride quality that only top tier steel can bring, check out our channel sponsor Wobby Cycles linked at the top of the description. What's up? I'm Zach Gallardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous. And subscribe for more fixed gear videos just like this one. With the events in Andreas for the asking price of 500 US dollars, what exactly are you getting, and is it even worth it for the specs? The frame set is made out of double butted Reynolds 520 steel with a lugged straight blade fork and down tube bottle bosses. The wheel set has 30 millimeter rims laced to seal bearing Novatec hubs and has 32 spokes in the front and rear with radial lacing in the front, if you're into that. And the wheels are wrapped in the entry-level 25C Kenda Criterium tires. As for the contact points, we have a 31.8mm cockpit for that added stiffness, and track grips on the drops because they look cool. The saddle is an Aventon branded saddle from Velo. It's comparable to most stock saddles in that some people will find that it's fine, whereas most people will hate it. And the pedals, well, they're courtesy pedals and at least they're made out of metal instead of plastic, so there's that. Like with most pedals, I would upgrade these out of the box. For the drivetrain, we have Sugino RD2 cranks, which is one of the best, if not the best, 130 BCD crank set, paired with the 48 tooth Sugino RD2 chain ring. The Andreas comes stock with a durable CNC cog and a beefy stock lock ring where the notches actually don't round out once you try to tighten or loosen the lock ring, unlike a lot of other bikes at this price range. And the complete weight of the event in Andreas that I tested with my own Wellgo pedals, toe clips, and straps weighs in at 20 pounds and 13 ounces or 9.44 kilograms. The pedals that it comes with aren't great and they don't come with foot retention and it also doesn't come with a rear brake. The Andreas is sold as a complete bike minus sufficient stopping power, which kind of feels like a Venton is skipping out on safety. And as with most stock saddles, you might want to upgrade it out of the box. The Andreas checks all the boxes for a good starter track bike, and for the asking price of $500, it's a good deal for the price. It's just not as much of a no-brainer deal as the Kilo TT Pro. But how does the bike actually ride. For sprinting and accelerating and maintaining speed, the Andreas unsurprisingly rides like a neutral steel bike. It has a nice balance between stiffness and compliance, although I think it could be a little bit stiffer. Some bikes at this price range feel really mushy in the bottom bracket area, and it can feel like you have to fight the bike in order to maintain speed, but thankfully this isn't the case with the Andreas. Again, the ride quality is mostly neutral and unoffending. A touch more stiffness would benefit the Andreas, though, since it can feel a touch squirrely when sprinting from stops or when climbing, but it's nothing that you can't get used to after a week or two of riding. The drivetrain is much better than a lot of the Andreas's competition with the Sugino RD2 cranks. RD2s have been the nicest 130BCD crank set that I've tried, and they're even stiffer than the in-house 144BCD cranks that State and Aventon have to offer. The chainring combined with Aventon's own CNC cog makes for a smooth running drivetrain, which is a little curious since the chain line may not be perfect perfectly straight. Aventon didn't spec the RD2s with the matching bottom bracket. To get a perfectly straight chain line with the RD2s, they accept a 103mm bottom bracket spindle, whereas Aventon spec the Andreas with a 107mm bottom bracket spindle, meaning the chain line could be straighter. I didn't measure the chain line though, and I didn't have any issues with drivetrain smoothness. But in the long term, a less than perfect chain line may lead to the drivetrain components wearing down faster. So let's let me know in the comments if you have an event in Andreas and if you've had any issues with Chainline. I was really surprised at how much I liked the stock 48-15 ratio on the Andreas since I really disliked the same ratio on the Aventa Matero. This probably has to do with my strong preference for steel bikes over aluminum bikes, but getting up to speed on the Andreas didn't feel nearly as much of a slog as it did on the Matero. With that said though, a lighter ratio would benefit the Andreas since number one, it feels smoothest at medium efforts, and number two, 
people that are buying this thing are most likely not going to ride on the track and when they're riding out on the streets they probably don't live in a completely flat area like I do. And as for cornering, there's no geometry chart available from Aventon from the Andreas, but in my experience, it feels like track-ish geometry instead of true track geometry. What that means is that I haven't experienced any toe overlap though, which is a plus for street riding. The Andreas reacts very similarly, whether you're steering the bike via turning the handlebars or leaning the bike. It's not overly reactive, it's not sluggish by any means, but it's neutral and and predictable, while still being able to take sharper corners if you lean the bike into them. Unfortunately, the Andreas only comes in sizes 52 through 61, so if you're shorter, that sucks. And because it is made out of double-butted Reynolds 520 steel, the frame set is very smooth and comfortable to ride. It doesn't plane or feel amazing at any power output, but rather it just feels really smooth at medium paces. As for the tires, the 25C Kenda Criteriums were fine. Not the grippiest in wet weather or in the corners, not overly harsh or supple, but they're fine. And as for the saddle, I found it usable for up to 20 to 30 miles. Anything beyond 30 miles though, I would start to feel sore and I would definitely feel it the next day. I just think that the saddle is too narrow. And the Andreas is likely to be able to handle daily abuse really well since it has sealed bearing everything from the headset, hubs, and bottom bracket. Aventon's attention to detail was much more of a mixed bag this go around. The packaging overall was above average. It came in a very sturdy box that is actually kind of difficult to open and all the packaging inside the box was in its proper place and everything pulled out in one piece. I did have a couple issues though, namely the wheels and some of the tubes were greasy and I had to clean the bike up. There was a small paint chip in the top tube and the drive side track end was chipped and slightly squished, which required some force to get the rear wheel in. The Andreas though was designed to be a functional and great looking first steel fixed gear, and I'd say they achieved that all while making it feel a little bit special with a limited run of 200 bikes. But it is a Venton's first steel bike, and there are some first generation issues. I noticed some quality control issues in the paint. The white bands don't line up perfectly or entirely straight, and you can see layers of paint underneath the white bands. If you can overlook that though, the color scheme is obviously pretty poppin', and although the rear of the bike looks black in photos, in person it's more of a sparkly dark navy or dark grey, which I personally think looks a lot better than just plain black. And the chrome fork crown adds a nice accent and takes some of the edge off of the paint job. As for Aventon's attention to detail for specs, what did they do right and what did they do wrong? Overall, the package is a really good value for the money. The wheels and cranks in particular are pretty solid, and the finish on the cockpits and the seat post is also above average. But there's a few things in Aventon's spec and attention to detail that can be improved with the Andreas. While track grips on the drops certainly look cool, I found them wildly impractical. The bare metal made the bars too cold for comfort to ride in even California's mild winters. And the bare metal on the bends made that hand position too slippery, so effectively you're losing out on an entire hand position. It's not just a winter issue either though. In warmer weather, sweaty hands can render the tops too slippery, and you'll miss out on that hand position. And a top two protector is essential with track grips so people aren't accidentally denting their frames at lockups or during crashes. The track grips certainly look really cool, but they sacrifice a bit too much practicality for me. The gear ratio can also be improved. While I personally like the 4815 gear ratio for very flat Sacramento, it is on the heavy side for street use where most people will be riding this bike. 4615 would be more in line with what the competition offers, but if a Venton could include a 4817 gear ratio, that would really set this bike apart. A big point of criticism that I have though is that a Venton cuts costs on safety, the last thing that you should cut costs on, by their exclusion of foot retention and a rear brake. It's especially shady though since they include a free wheel on the bike. Aventon is pretty much saying, yeah, we expect people to ride with insufficient stopping power out of the box, and we're fine with that. For fixed gear riding, a front brake with no rear brake and no foot retention is not sufficient stopping power, and a front brake only setup with the exclusion if a rear brake is straight up 
irresponsible and unacceptable. I get that most people who get this bike will ride it as a fixed gear and that most fixed gear riders don't want a rear brake anyway, but that's only if they have proper foot retention. Do keep in mind that all the Vincent's fixed gears only come with the front brake. As opposed to the Matero though, it's a much bigger letdown here because the Andreas is much more likely to be somebody's first fixed gear. So they're much less likely to already own a set of pedals. And they're also more likely to actually use the freewheel. Although a Vincent should definitely include a rear brake, even if it's just a cruddy one, it would have at least been nice to see the option to add a rear brake at the checkout. Another area a Vincent can improve is their tire clearance quality control. Tire clearance is one of the most important aspects of a frame set. Some people choose specific frame sets based solely on the amount of tire clearance it has. And with the Andreas that I tested, it can fit up to a 28C tire in the front, but in the rear, the brake bridge limits the tire clearance greatly, and it barely fits the stock 25C tire. So is the Aventon Andreas worth it? Well, that depends on what the competition is and what bikes that you have available to buy. The Kilo TT Pro is very similar specs across the board, and it includes foot retention and both front and rear brakes. But the Kilo TT Pro suffers from the same tire clearance issues, if not worse. But the Kilo TT Pro costs $50 less if you're in the United States, a better value overall. The State 4130 Coraline costs $50 less, and it shows in the lower spec frame set and lower spec crank set, and way worse quality control, but you do get more choice for handlebars and upgrades right at checkout. And also, tire clearance has not been an issue. The Pure Cycles Premium is also $50 less, but also it's lower spec pretty much across the board. Although in my experience, I found the bottom bracket area and the cranks really not stiff enough and a slog to pedal, it does have better tire clearance than the Aventon Andreas. So who is the Andreas for? Well, it's still a really solid bike for $500. The wheels are good enough for intermediate riders to abuse them daily, and the Sagino RD2 cranks make pedaling the bike nicer than most of the competition. Barring the Kilo TT Pro, that is. The limited run of 200 bikes also makes the bike feel much more special than the other options. And I must say that the color is pretty slick. In the US, it's the next best option from the Kilo TT Pro as far as getting the most bike for your money goes. Price will vary a lot outside of the US, but if you have to spend up to 600 to 650 US dollars, that's still a fine buy. Not a great deal like it is in the US, but it's fine. So if you can't get a Kilo TT Pro, or if you like the exclusivity and the color of the Aventon Andreas, then this bike is for you. Otherwise, the Kilo TT Pro still reigns supreme for giving you the most bike for your money. Speaking of getting the most bike for your money, our channel sponsor Bobby Cycles has custom levels of ride quality all at a reasonable price. I get to ride a lot of bikes and I've by far liked Wobby's the best out of all the bikes that I've ridden. And don't tell Wobby, but I would say that and I have said that even if and when they aren't sponsoring the channel. Wobbies are specced with no-nonsense, high-performing components designed and carefully chosen to give you the best ride quality for your money. So if you're looking for your ends all be all fixed gear bike, consider checking out our channel sponsor Wobby Cycles linked at the top of the description. And stop watching me right now if you haven't ridden your bike yet. Instead, ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.